For anybody that just wants to know when the next closed beta is, the third closed beta for Hell Let Loose is on April 5th. And as I was recording for this video, the pre-orders for Hell Let Loose opened up. So if you want to play with me in the beta, now you can. All you need to do now is pre-order so you can get into the next couple of betas. The game will come to early access on June 6th. D-Day. So if you do decide to pre-order, I guess I'll see you in the beta. I may or may not stream it on Twitch, not sure yet. For anybody that wants to hear what I had to say about beta 2, well, here we go. Those of you that don't know what the Honest Opinion series is, it's basically me playing alphas or betas and telling you what I thought. Bear in mind that these games aren't finished yet, so don't take this as the final product. Leading up to the second beta, I was reading all of the developer briefings, and they were all talking about how there was going to be big changes to the St. Mary Dumont map, like adding more set pieces so that there's more things to hide behind because the fields were pretty open, at least when I played in the alpha, and they also talked about updating the interior so that the buildings looked lived in. It was pretty simple stuff that I certainly welcomed. If there was anything that was really eye-opening, it was probably when the update came out that the medic is actually going to get a weapon. They gave the medic the M1 carbine, but with very limited ammo. I was very neutral when it came to the medic getting a gun situation because it was kind of like a historical accuracy versus gameplay sort of thing. So I just sat on the sidelines for that one. But I just really wanted to hop back into the St. Mary Dumont map. Out of the two maps that I have played for Hell Let Loose, St. Mary Dumont is probably my favorite. While I thought that the Hurricane Forest was a gorgeous and interesting map to play on, I don't know, there's just something about St. Mary Dumont that I really liked. Maybe it's just because I prefer flat maps to hills? I don't know, but I was just really ready to get back into that map. But about a day before the second beta was going to start, it was almost as if the developers did a bait and switch, because they put out a developer briefing that stated that they want to test out their new revamped meta game on Hurricane Forest. Which is like... <sighs> fine... I guess I'll play on Hurricane Forest again. Ugh. Admittedly, I ended up having more fun in the Hurricane Forest this time around. The only people that are staying are the ones that are about to die. Oh, Took down two. Nice kill, nice kill. When it came to gunplay, I felt that it was improved. I could actually kill enemies because when I aimed down sights, I could hold my breath for longer than just a second. Oh my goodness, I was having way more fun this time around. So they changed up the meta game, and if you don't remember how it used to be, then this video should tell you how it used to be. In the beta, there was a new mode called Sectors and Strong Points. At least I think it was a mode, I'm not entirely sure if it was the standard or the mode. But anyways, the point of the mode is to capture these sectors by having a lot of troops in them, or having your squad on the sector's strong point. The strong point elevates the trooper's capping power, but if the enemy has more troops than the strong point's capping power, they can still take the sector. It's an idea that seems cool on paper, but put into practice, it's uh... It's okay. If you want to hear my full thoughts about the original metagame, click on the eye icon that is on the top right of the video that should take you right to it. The way that the metagame feels now, it's very reminiscent of Squad or Postscriptum's AAS game mode, where you're just basically going from flag to flag and defending one specific area. So it's been heavily stripped from the original idea that they had, which is kind of a shame because the original was actually pretty unique to the likes of Squad and Postscriptum. It was kind of like another edge that Hell Let Loose had over those games. The infrastructure itself was essentially built like a Company of Heroes map, where when you cap an area, you'll get more resources that can be used to buy things like artillery strikes or tanks, just more stuff that you can send to the front line the more of the map you conquer. I really like the idea of the metagame, it really sounded great on paper, but the developers seemed to have an issue with implementation because a lot of people, including myself, had a lot of issue with balancing. So maybe this is why they simplified it. The game is still a work in progress, so maybe they'll work something out with the system more later on down the road. I just really hope that they get it to work because I really like the idea of the system. All right, moving on. So the second beta was a first for me because out of all the betas and alphas that I have actually played, I've never felt such a drop off in FPS playing this game before. So they added in the commander and one of his abilities is to bombard anything on the map in like a line formation. Take cover guys. Run away! 
Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, it almost killed me. Oh my god, that was too close. And every time that it happened, it would tank my FPS. Like, oh my god! Fucking god, the lag. Man, if there wasn't a fix for that, I would not have played this beta. All I had to do was turn down the FX quality, and it actually solved the problem for the most part. I mean, of course, when you add new things to the game, especially things like multiple explosions, it's going to severely unoptimize the game. Case in point, if anybody's ever played Squad, and the first time that they implemented the Bradley, it would literally crash the map the moment that it would explode. But the developers have prided themselves on wanting to optimize their game, and their previous alphas and betas have showed that. So they'll no doubt have this issue sorted, but let's continue. So aside from the bombardment being annoying, the second most annoying thing was that there was a glitch. When you go into the prone position and you try to stand up, your gun would act like it's in the prone position as he's standing up. So it would like fling to the left and that, oh my God, that was so annoying. So I tried my best to stay off of the ground for the most part, but those were probably like the, mo the two most annoying things about the beta for me. The rest was pretty smooth sailing for the most part. Just some wacky things like the tanks would go flying for some reason or they would get stuck in like a position and can't move out if there was anything that felt like broken to me i think it would probably be the bazooka the bazooka felt extremely weak against the panther What the fuck? No matter how many times that I would try to hit it in the back, it wouldn't penetrate. It would only deflect. Like, how the hell? You're shooting it in the back. That's where it's supposed to be vulnerable, right? Like, unless my history is wrong. Am I a fucking idiot? Probably. The Panzer Shrek works just fine on a Sherman, though. The moment that I get up behind it and shoot it once in the back, it just fucking explodes. <laughs> so I've noticed that quite a bit of YouTubers were mentioning that there is a bit of a floatiness when it comes to your head and your gun. Basically what's happening is, um, say you're moving your head like to the left, your gun doesn't actually like follow your head, like there's a slight delay when it tries to get to you. Basically what's going on is that your head isn't fully attached to your body, so your head is moving faster than your body. I actually don't mind this feature, but when you're doing it like ridiculously fast, like your gun can actually go off of the screen when you go too fast. The reason why I actually kind of like it is because the guns are supposed to be heavy. In real life, those guns aren't light, they're heavy, so they're gonna take a bit to get to your face. So I actually kind of like that feature, but they need to fix that feature so that when you're moving too fast, it doesn't go all the way off the screen, making it look like your head is disconnected from your body. I just wanted to talk about that because I noticed a lot of YouTubers were saying something that I try to, you know, put my two cents in. So the last thing that I want to talk about is the newer version of the metagame that was present in the second beta. Overall, I thought that it was actually better because both teams were actually focused on one general point. So the battles were big and they were actually fun to fight in, but it felt more linear than actually being in an open battlefield. Whereas in the previous version, there would only be like small kerfuffles or none at all. Sometimes we would just pass each other up and not even realize where the enemy is. While I thought that it was better, it really defeated the purpose of the previous metagame that they had in mind. And that's all I really have to say about the second beta. Overall, I thought it was just all right. It wasn't as good as the first couple of betas that I played, but yeah. So before I end the video, I just want to go over the developer briefing that just came out the other day. And it basically talks about the upcoming content that's coming up for Hell Let Loose. And it's quite a bit of stuff, so I will link it in the description because I'm only going to be brief here. So they're going to be planning to add more vehicles into the game. Some that'll haul supplies, some that'll just be support, others that'll be anti-tank. That all sounds pretty cool for the vehicles. The next one says advanced movement. Oh my goodness, they're going to add vaulting. Yes, vault! 
revolting. Ugh. That's right, you'll be able to haul yourself over trenches, over fences, and even conveniently over short walls. Yes, yes, yes. The next one they talk about refining animations, which sounds pretty cool. But then the next one they say that they're going to do another overhaul with the audio improvements. But they're saying that they're going to do it in stages instead of just doing it outright. They're going to be adding in new game modes. Apparently there are two that are being worked on at the moment with the titles of Invasion and Campaign. Apparently they're going to offer different experiences to what's available right now. I wonder if the campaign is going to be pretty much just like um, Rising Storms campaign. They're going to be doing a bunch of balancing when it comes to all the maps and resource management. There's two new maps that are going to be getting added. There's a uh, Foy in Utah Beach, which I've actually been looking forward to because the only one that I've liked so far is um, St. Mary Dumont. I thought that Hurricane Force was okay, but I prefer flat maps. There's apparently going to be adjustments to the HUD and the UI. They're going to have some sort of cosmetic system where you can change up the way that your helmet looks, uh, maybe the way that your uniform looks a little bit, which I think is pretty cool. It says here that they're not going to be using a loot box system, which is which is good in my book. And at the very end, they say that the flamethrower is coming along nicely. Woohoo! I can't wait to roast some Nazis. But yeah, that was just a brief overview of the current developer briefing. If you want to link to that, it's going to be in the description so you can read it for yourself. But yeah, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.